PC gaming is a much larger industry than console gaming. That's why the console industry is shifting in a way to accommodate all those extra potential sales on the PC. It was reported recently that there are an estimated 1.86 billion PC gamers worldwide. Compare that to the 50 some million PS5 consoles that have been sold since its release and you should be able to figure out pretty quickly why so many publishers are scrambling to get their games on Steam because even if a tiny percentage of that 1.86 billion gives them money money, that's still a lot of money. Like 0.1% of the PC gaming population is still almost 2 million people. There is so much money to be made on the PC as a gaming platform, and it's about time that Sony and Microsoft realize that. Microsoft figured it out long ago, and Sony has been slowly but surely accepting that the PC is their future. But the longtime Sony faithful are still having issues accepting this, which brings us to today's main topic. Every few days, my Twitter For You tab will throw me some of the dumbest takes I've ever seen, which is typically when I make a video about it and share it with all of you, and we have a nice little hearty laugh together about it. But today, Today's main course is going to be a little more in depth if that's all right with you because it ended up being a bit more layered than I was expecting. So the, the other, other day, day, a user named X Square Circle Triangle screenshotted a post from someone else and let's first look at their screenshot. The screenshot is a tweet from Noir, who is talking about the news that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth reportedly sold 2 million copies, which puts it behind Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XVI. And he writes, if this is true, this is a worse disaster than I expected. Square Enix really dropped the ball here. The next entry should at least release on PC day one so that PC players save this game. PlayStation fanboys are not doing you any favors, Square Enix. Now, I have never heard of Noir before. I saw some people calling him a big old dastardly Sony hater or a big X box shill. I don't know. That's not the point of this video, because we're going back to where this video began with this post from X Square Circle Triangle, who screenshotted Noir's post and said this. So PC players save this game, you realize that the majority of them will pirate this game. Only a handful will support this hashtag PlayStation Classic, hashtag Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And usually in videos like this, I would start there and then just go over all the dumb people in this thread. And rest assured, we're still going to do that because a lot of people came out to defend this stupid thread and defend OP for whatever reason, but something not so usual for my content is that I quote tweeted OP and said this, why are we still doing the whole PC gamers don't buy games thing? And I attached some screenshots of PC games from this year that have sold tremendously. And surprisingly, my tweet not only got a lot of traction, but also attracted a bunch of stupid brainlets also trying to defend OP, because apparently I'm capable of just summoning PlayStation fanboy salt into existence now. So I guess I've discovered my own source of renewable energy. So first we'll go over all the salty kids in OP's thread, and then we'll go over to the salty kids who came into my thread. And spoiler alert, that's where things get really juicy, so stick around. So first let's dive into the defenders of OP's original post. Quinn QQ responds and says, majority of PC players are poor and need to pirate. They don't even have good systems. When in doubt, poor shame people because they don't want to buy a PS5. But then uh, he also had another zinger in this thread. Peter responded to OP and said, show me the data that suggests most PC players would pirate it. And then Quinn QQ responds, show me the data where majority will buy it. I love this. The good old fashioned trust me, bro. <laughs> like, just so we're clear, OP says most PC gamers will pirate the game. Peter asks for proof of that claim, and then Quinn QQ comes in and says, no you, basically. Like, bro, you guys are the ones making an argument based on a claim that you have no proof of. If you're trying to argue that most PC gamers pirate games, the burden of proof is on you, not the PC gamers. Here, let me let me just let me just run a scenario by you so you can understand this a little better. Let's say I accuse you, Quinn QQ, of drinking liquid flamingo shit behind a Wells Fargo. And I tell everyone that I've caught you many times drinking liquid flamingo shit behind a Wells Fargo. And you respond to that with, Joe, that didn't happen. I've never done that. But then I respond to you with, oh yeah? Prove it. You say something is happening. I say, no, it's not. And instead of presenting evidence of your claim being true and the thing is happening, you're trying to shift the burden of proof onto me for challenging the thing that you say is true, when in reality, if it were true, all you'd have to do is prove it. Share a screenshot, link an article, do literally 
anything. But no, instead, you put the burden of proof onto the people that you made something up about. Also, ultimate irony alert, even if you were right and the majority of PC gamers pirated Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it would still sell more than the PS5 version. Again, 1.86 billion PC gamers. If 95% of all PC gamers pirated the game and only 5% actually bought it, congratulations, that's 93 million sold copies. You doofus. Due to Majora responds to OP and says, Sony paid handsomely for this exclusive. I bet the game already paid for itself with Sony money plus this sales alone. So, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth selling less than the other PlayStation exclusives of Final Fantasy games, that's fine because Square made money from the Microsoft deal. You think it's perfectly fine that less people get to buy the game because Sony money. Don't bring it to PC, don't bring it to other platforms, don't let more people experience the art, third-party exclusivity is okay because Sony money. Wow. Yusu Kitagawa responds, most PC gamers are liars and hypocrites. And you spelled hypocrites wrong. That moment when you hate PC gamers so much you can't even use spell check effectively. David Samuel Profeta responds, PC players can go play on the highway where them and their opinions belong. All this because someone dared suggest that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth would have sold more copies if it were on PC day one. Which is true. Like, we're only having this discussion because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sold less than the other PlayStation exclusive Final Fantasies. If you actually supported the games you boast about, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. But then again, I know RPGs are really scary to the PlayStation crowd, which is why when presented with this news, you tell PC players to go into the highway. I think you might be taking this too seriously. Greg FX666 hardcore name says, I wouldn't worry about what Noir says, he's just engagement farming. Unfortunately, games are going to sell less because of games as a service. The games have barely been out, Final Fantasy VII will have legs. Rise of the Ronin just came out over two weeks ago. Tessa Media responds, Power World sold 6 million in one week and 25 million in one month, PC and Xbox. Greg says, I don't care. See, this is what I was talking about with that Quinn QQ guy earlier. You guys literally don't care about reality. You just want things to be the way you want them to be and nothing else matters. You say something, someone tells you that the information that you have is not true, or they present you with information that contradicts what you said, and you just flat out say, you don't care. Maybe Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sold less than other recent Final Fantasies because people are burnt out on $70 games and they're waiting for a price drop. Maybe it sold less because people are switching to PC and just waiting for the inevitable port. Because buying a whole ass console for one game that you want is just not really a, a smiled upon practice anymore. And it shouldn't be. Maybe there are plenty of legitimate reasons why Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sold less than 7 and 16 did. And maybe those reasons have nothing to do with games as a service. Which is why when presented with the fact that earlier this year, all those $70 PS5 exclusives were blown out of the water by an indie game, you don't even try to explain why you're dismissing it. You just do. Like, why do you guys bend your brains to try and come up with reasons why these things are happening, and then someone just presents you with real things that mean you don't have to bend your brain into a pretzel anymore because they have the truth right in front of you, and you literally just dismiss it because you'd rather bend your brain into a pretzel in Sony's favor. People wonder why I keep making fun of PlayStation fanboys, but like, how could I not when this is what you do every single time a piece of gaming news comes out? Why is it impossible for you to believe that Sony's strategy of $70 console exclusives just isn't working the way they wanted it to? Why is it so hard to believe that putting a huge price tag and an artificial platform restriction on a game will also put a cap on how many people want to pay for it? That's not hard to understand. Loyal Maker 2 says PC players never buy, they pirate, they are funny. Right, PC gamers never buy, which is why Steam bought over half of the sold copies of Helldivers 2, and why Palworld sold over 15 million copies on Steam alone in a month, 
and why Horizon Forbidden West saw a giant sales boost right after the PC version launched, and wait a minute, those are all screenshots that I shared with my quote tweet of X Circle Square Triangle whatever his stupid name was, and what a perfect segue that is. Yes, we're going to scoot over to my thread on the topic, because basically all the defenses of OP and OP's thread come down to just PC gamers are stinky and should go sit in the highway, but also don't you dare criticize PlayStation because we are such an intellectual and thoughtful community of level-headed gamers, obviously. Go sit in the highway if you disagree with us, but we're also very mature and you should listen to us. But I got some pretty fun responses to this quote tweet, some of whom actually came dangerously close to making an actual argument, so let's see what they've got. Uh, like this one from Snubs, who says, PC Master Cucks couldn't pirate the live service games like Pal World and Helldivers. I like how you curiously omitted the third game I listed there. In my post, I mentioned Helldivers, Pal World, and Horizon, you only referenced two of those. You suspiciously didn't want to mention Horizon, because that would kind of destroy your entire point, especially given the fact that the PC version of Horizon Forbidden West was cracked immediately upon release, and yet it still sold very well. So just, just let's nip this in the bud right now. Here's the list, the official list from Steam themselves, of the best-selling PC games of 2023. Number three is Starfield, which is not only piratable, but is also on Xbox Game Pass. Baldur's Gate 3 is number four, that game is piratable. Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk, you can definitely pirate those. And speaking of Cyberpunk, that game has actually sold a majority of its copies on the PC, again, despite being piratable. Have you ever considered that maybe PC gamers do buy games and they just have more respect for their money so they don't let go of their wallet as easily as you do? I leave you with this quote from Gabe Newell. The easiest way to stop piracy is not by putting anti-piracy technology to work, it's by giving those people a service that's better than what they're receiving from the pirates. And if you respect your consumer, they will give you money for your product. And since the PC platform is already kind of built upon consumer respect, at least, you know, much more than the consoles are, it shouldn't be surprising that so many people pirate games, and yet there is still so much money being made off of proper copies. People are always going to pirate games, that's inevitable. But the success of games like Helldivers and Pal World was not because they were impossible to pirate, it's because they were something the consumer wanted. They were fun games at a fair price, just just like so many other games on the PC. The way to make money on this platform is not to shove a bunch of DRM into your games. The way to make money is to respect your consumer and give them what they want. You're never going to get habitual pirates to change their ways, and people who pirate all of their games are not a lost sale on future games because they were never going to buy your game to begin with. But with the sheer number of PC gamers in the ecosystem, you have to treat your paying customers with respect because there are so many other games vying for their attention. Helldivers and Pal World wouldn't have made any money if they weren't giving the consumer something they wanted. There are plenty of games with intrusive DRM that don't make any money. Helldivers and Pal World were unique in the sense that they had pretty intrusive DRM, and yet still sold a lot of copies because they were, again, fun games at fair prices. Crazy how that works, right? Okay, let's let's move on before I put more of you to sleep with my stupid rambling. Andrea says, but it's true, millions of PC gamers pirate single player games. Yes, and there are over a billion PC gamers in the ecosystem. It's almost like the amount of piracy is not enough to deter publishers from the amount of money being made. I didn't see you console dudes using this argument back when pre-owned games were all the rage, even though those didn't give any money to the game's creator or publisher either. But pre-owned games were totally fine because the amount of money being made off the, you know, quote, proper sold copies, they made up for it. Kind of like how piracy is unavoidable, but if you're making a boatload of cash off the proper copies, it's still worth it to release on PC, again, because the people who were never going to buy a proper copy of your game to begin with are not a lost sale. I just think it's interesting how you console dudes only had a shift in attitude on this after your exclusive started going to PC. I didn't see any of you complaining about pre-owned games, even though they have the same impact on the publisher as pirated games do. But only after your exclusive game started going to PC, now suddenly getting a game without giving money to the publisher is a massive problem. I just think that's interesting. Here's another one from Andrea. They were pretty upset with me for this tweet. They say, uh, Pal World is $30, Helldivers is $40, PC gamers love cheap games, Spider-Man sold 20 million on PS4 and only 1.5 million on PC. 
Oh, and just to hammer the comedy home, their profile picture is literally just a Naughty Dog promotional image, just in case that wasn't obvious enough. But I like how you just kind of admit here that PC gamers respect their money more than PlayStation gamers do. Like, oh, PC gamers love cheap games, so PlayStation gamers don't like games being cheaper? Are you saying PlayStation guys enjoy giving more money to publishers? Because if so, that's kind of a weird argument and not a little bootlicky. And as for the Spider-Man point of, oh, Spider-Man sold 20 million on PS4, but only 1.5 on the PC. The point you so cleverly left out there was the fact that the PC version came out four years after the PS4 version, so obviously it didn't sell as many copies. Little strange of you to bring this up just a couple sentences after you mentioned Helldivers 2, which sold the majority of its copies on the PC, largely because it didn't take four years to come to PC. I also think it's funny that you are yet another person who responded to my tweet and ignored the third screenshot I provided, which was Horizon Forbidden West, which was a full $60 and cracked immediately upon release, and it still sold really well on PC. Tap out of this one, you have lost. Ooh, but uh, best for less, best, best for last. This is my favorite response I got. Remember, in my tweet, I said, why are we still doing the PC gamers don't buy games thing? And then a default profile picture named at Metro 101 PSN replies, I can't think of a reason personally, and attaches a screenshot of a 2016 survey that stated 35% of PC gamers actively pirate games. Oh, you sweet summer child who doesn't understand how percentages work. Remember that number I keep I keep bringing up? 1.8 billion PC gamers worldwide. If 35% of PC gamers actively pirate games, that means 65% of them do not. Do you know what 65% of 1.8 billion is? Do you even want to know what that number is? Or are you just going to start crying if I tell you? Because I will tell you, it's 1.17 billion. So your argument as to why people insist that PC gamers don't buy games, your reason for people saying that is because by your evidence, 1.17 billion PC gamers do buy games. Your argument for why it's okay to say that PC gamers don't buy games is because over a billion of them do. You genius. You absolute corporate knob slobbering genius. Look, you guys really gotta stop with the whole PC gamers don't buy games thing, especially when this whole thing, this whole video only exists because someone had the gall to point out the objective fact that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth would have sold more copies if it were multi-platform. That's how this started. The PC is the future of gaming. You either get used to it or you get out. I'm not saying you have to play on PC or that you have to even like the PC, but if you're going to obsess over stuff like this and put so much energy into denying reality and making a fool of yourself, you honestly should consider just getting out of this hobby because you're wasting internet space that could be used by people who actually want to be here. Or, you can keep doing this and keep giving me content, which is actually fine. Okay, toodles.